Hey there, this is Joshua from Statimic, and after a few months of typing characters into our code editors, we are proud to finally bring you Statimic 4, the next step in the evolution of Statimic. This release focuses on two things in particular. First, a better user experience throughout the control panel, and second, the modernization of our code base so developers enjoy working with our platform even more. Everything is now more intuitive, and we've done a bunch of updates to field types and lots of other UI components. Some things you notice, some things you might not, like container queries, which make the whole control panel more responsive and adaptable. The whole control panel now has a more streamlined look with updated icons, adjusted spacing, and new colors. And we also tweaked things like how tabs and sections look and behave. Let's have a look. Statemic 3's concept of sections has now been renamed to tabs, and sections are what sections are meant to be, as you can see here. The tabs, previously called sections, well, they are now actual tabs. It just gives you better visual structure and hierarchy with the new sections. We've also done lots of internal upgrades, which you benefit from, especially as a developer. For instance, we now support Laravel 10, dropped support for PHP 7.4, switched to Vite for our tooling, and also upgraded to the latest version of Tailwind CSS. Let's go through some of the other changes in more detail now. The set pickers you use in both the BART and Replicator fields are now much nicer than before. You can now organize them into groups and set them apart visually with large icons and descriptions. There even is a search built-in, so you can quickly find the set you need. We handpicked over 150 icons for you to choose from, and that should satisfy most needs for common and even some more exotic content blocks. Let's see what those groups look like over in the Blueprint Builder. Select the BART field and scroll down. You see that it's the same new tab and sections UI that Blueprints itself gained in Statimic 4. For the purpose of this video, most of them are empty, but the rich media group has some sets defined in it. Let's go ahead and create a new one. A tweet embed could be useful, so give it a title, a description, and select an icon. Is there a Twitter one? There is. Click Confirm, Apply, Save, and go back to the entry. And as you can see, there now is the new tweet embed set with the icon and everything. The list field type also got a major redesign and is now better in just every way imaginable. It's visually much more appealing and better structured compared to the previous design. Reordering items is much easier as they snap right into place, as you can see here. And even though we don't support Vim key maps yet, which is a bummer, we improved keyboard support immensely. Not only can you tap through items now and remove them via your keyboard, but you are also able to add new items to the list when hitting enter while the last item is focused. One of the two new field types in Statimic 4 is the new icon field. Where you previously might have used an asset field or something different entirely, you now have a dedicated field for all of your icons. It has built-in search and lets you set a few different config options. Let's look at them over in the Blueprint Builder. Here you can see our icon field defined at a width of 50% and when we click it, you see its config options. Down here you see three options that are specific to the icon field. The first one lets you define a directory where your icons are stored. If you want to limit your icons to a specific subset, 
like solid or outline ones for example, you can configure it right here with the second option. The third input lets you define a default value. Let's set it to R2D2, hit apply, save, and go back to the collection to create a new entry. As you can see, R2D2 is now the default value for this icon field. Another improvement for the table, replicator and grid field types is that they now all support full screen mode. You might already be familiar with it from the BART or Markdown field types. Here in this example, I'm using a table field. Imagine working with lots of data requiring you to have a gazillion rows and columns. It can quickly get crowded as you can see. Having full screen mode available just gives you more space and a better overview so you can focus on editing your content. The other new field type in Statimic 4 is the width field. But it's not entirely new to be honest. It's been part of Statimic for quite some time, but it was just getting used under the hood, like in the blueprint builder. And we now exposed it for you to use in your own blueprints. It's quite simple, but also really handy and useful. Let's have a look at the range of settings it offers. Here you can see the width field in action, by the way. And it's been here for years. Clicking on it reveals the options. Down here, you can define the available widths to choose from and also set a default value. There are lots of possible use cases for it. One could be defining the width of certain content on your site, for example. The color field type also got a redesign, resulting in a better user experience. You can pick a color from a predefined palette or use the browser's picker to select one. The preview also updates while you edit it. Let's look at the settings of the color field in the Blueprint Builder. Here in the appearance, and behavior section, you can set all of the predefined values that you want to appear. For a brand guide, it makes sense to limit the selection to a predefined list of colors. So let's switch off the any color setting. Hit apply, save, and let's go back to the entry. As you can see, we are now limited to select one of the provided and predefined colors. The time field also got some much needed love. It feels more natural and more intuitive compared to how it behaved before. It now allows for natural keyboard entry while addressing the formatting automatically. No more tabbing back and forth between hours and minutes or clicking the individual values with the mouse. Just type time in a natural way. You can still use the up and down arrows if you want to adjust the input. And optionally, you can also enable seconds or set a default value over in the Blueprint Builder. In this case, we set the time field to appear in the sidebar. And the options for enabling seconds or setting a default value are down here. 